Hi everyone, today we're going to be making a completely physics based button in Unity using rigid bodies. It can interact with any collider and trigger any Unity event. The sounds and script will be in the description. Okay, so in order to create the physics button, we're first going to create the script that controls a lot of the physics and the actions. I'm going to call mine physics button. and open it up in Visual Studio Code. Drag it over here. Um, so in order to use events, we need to include the using uh, Unity Engine dot events. And I'm going to copy and paste all the variables that we need. So what the button top does is it basically just uh, saves the top of the button, the thing that actually moves within the base and the lower and upper limit are simply just transforms that we use to track the upper and lower limit that we want the top of the button to uh, either to be contained in. Um, the threshold is a value between 0 and 1 that we use to calculate whether or not the button should be triggered. So let's say it's at 0.5, then halfway between the lower and upper limit the button will be pressed. Uh, the force will be used to basically provide a spring force on the button top in order to make it return to the top position like a button would. The up and upper and lower difference uh, variable is a private variable that we are going to calculate that we use to use with the threshold variable to calculate whether or not the is pressed uh, boolean should be on or off. And the previous press state is just used that um, the on press and on released Unity events are only triggered once. So, because let's say the is pressed is true, uh, then every update on press would be uh, fired. And we only want it to happen once. And the press sound and release sound are just audio sources that we're going to trigger when uh, the button is pressed. So the first thing that we want to do is want to move to the start function. And we want to ignore collisions between the top of the button and the base of the button. That way it's uh, they can clip through each other and they're not going to cause any problems. Um, and we want to check if the base of the button is has an angle of zero. So if it's upright, then we're simply just going to calculate the upper lower diff as the um, upper limit position dot y, take away the lower limit dot position dot y. And if it isn't, then we need to rotate the base of the button to zero. So we're going to first save the um, the angle of the button. We're going to change the base of the button to have an angle of zero. Calculate the um, upper lower diff like we do over here. And then set it back to the saved angle. I'm sure there's a better way of doing that, but it was just the simplest way for me. The next thing that we want to do is... We want to set the local position of the button top to have a uh, clamped X and Z position because we only want the button to be able to go up and down within the socket. We don't want it to be shifting left or right or doing anything like that. And we also want to set the local angle to be a um, at the zero position because since the top of the button is going to be parented to the base. Um, the top of the button will always have the same rotation as a base, so it can always have a local rotation of zero. The next thing that we want to do is we want to check if the um, button top's local position dot y is greater than or equal to zero. So since the uh, the top of the button is going to be parented to the upper limit, um, if the if the local position of the top of the button is zero, then it's going to be at the upper limit. So we say if it's greater than or equal to that, then we want to simply set the uh, button top's transfer to position equal to the upper limit position. So that way, if it exceeds the, the upper limit, it's just going to be set to the upper limit. And it, if it isn't at the upper limit, then we want to add that spring force, which is just the button top's transform dot up, which is going to be the up vector that's coming out of that button, times the force times time dot fixed delta time since we're in the update function. The next thing we want to do is we want to do the same thing but for the lower limit. So basically if it's below the lower limit, then we want to set the transform position dot uh, to the lower limit. And for the 
distance calculation. So to calculate whether or not the button is actually pressed, we want to do a vector 3 dot distance between the uh, the top of the button and the lower limit. We want to check if that's less than our upper lower diff that we calculated in the start times that threshold. So let's say the upper lower diff is one unit, so the distance between the upper and uh, lower limit transforms that we've defined is one times our threshold of 0.5, so we want it to only happen if it's below 0.5. Um, if we have a distance of let's say 0.4, then the button would be considered pressed because the distance between the button top and the lower limit is less than the total travel distance time the th times the threshold that we've given. So that would trigger all unpressed or is pressed equal to true, and if it isn't, if it's greater than uh, that 0.5, let's say, then it would be is pressed equals false. The last thing in the update function is actually calling our pressed and released functions. So first we want to check if is pressed and the previous press state is not equal to the current pressed. So this will happen only once because when pressed is fired you're going to see that we're going to set the previous state to the current state. So if we copy and paste our functions in there as you can see when pressed happens previous press state is equal to the current press state or is pressed um, so that way, when is pressed is fired, uh, the f only in one of the updates this will be true, because after this is pressed or the pressed function is called, the previous press state is equal to is pressed. Uh, then we're going to simply set the pitch, uh, play the press sound, and then invoke the on pressed uh, unity events that we have here. And the same for release, except we change the pitch so it has a little bit of random sound to it, and it sounds nicer. So now that we've created the script, we're going to load it into Unity, see if we have any errors, and it doesn't look like we do. So now we have to actually create the button itself. So I'm going to create a parent object, call it button. And underneath this button, we need to create a, not an empty, but a cube. Create a 3D object cube. I'm going to call this base. This is going to be the base of the button. As you can see, purple on this side, this would be considered the base. I'm going to set it to 0 0.8, 0 0.6, and 0 0.8. I'm going to add a rigid body to it. Um, I'm going to set it to interpolate, continuous. I'm going to add the physics button one that I've created. And I'm going to add a audio source and simply put a clip in that I like, that I found online. And I'm going to uh, deselect play on awake so it doesn't make a clicking sound when it uh, first starts. Um, in order to create the rest of the button, we need to define this upper limit. Um, so let's just add that. And we're going to raise it up. So this is the upper limit that I was talking about in the script. And underneath the upper limit, we need to create another cube. Um, and this is going to be the top of the button. And I'm going to set its scale to 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8. And I'm going to call it uh, button top. And as you can see, the uh, it's almost clipping outside of the button, so we just want to lower our upper limit a little bit so it doesn't uh, look funny and it's clipping inside of it. And the last thing you want to add is the lower limit. And this will just be the um, where the button will stop, so we can just put it around there. And now that we've done all of that, we also need to add a rigid body to this. I'm going to add rigid body. I'm going to set the mass very low, something like 0 0.001, let's say. Uh, untick use gravity because we do not want it to use gravity. Set it to interpolate and continuous, that way the physics will look better. And I think that's about it. We can move on to our base now and start adding in all of our transforms. So the button top, the upper limit, the lower limit. And I'm going to set a, po a threshold of 0.5. Uh, the 4 second, keep it at 10. 
and I can add our audio source into here. And just for testing purposes, I'm going to add another cube. And I'm going to move it up. I'm going to add a rigid body to it and make it is kinematic. So now if we play, our button should have fallen fallen, and as you can see it's parented and if we uh, quickly move over to the base and lock it we can see if the is pressed actually gets triggered so as you can see you can hear the sound the is pressed has now gone off if we release it makes another sound and is pressed is no longer false um, so now to use the unity events uh, for example we can give we can put in a point light, put it on the back of the wall there. As you can see, it's really bright. We can disable the light for now. And if we go into our base again and we add a on pressed unity event, we can trigger it to be turning off the light. So we can say, if it's pressed, we want to set the light to be enabled. And if it's released, we want to have the light be disabled. So something like that. So now if we hit play again, go to our scene view. Oops. You can see if we press it, the light turns on, and if you release it, it turns off. And it makes a sound, it triggers the light, it does everything properly. So let's say you want to make a button that's like this. It's on the wall and it's completely static. What we can do is we can go to the base, we can set it to kinematic and it should work as intended. As you can see it's still there, the top of the button still works and it still turns on and off that light. And if we want to rotate it, this is very key, you don't want to rotate the actual parent object, you always want to rotate um, the base of the object. So for example we can set this to 90 degrees, um, move this over, hit play, And as you can see, it still works as intended. So that's about it. You have a fully physics-based button. It's perfect for VR games because it's completely interactable. There's, it's all physics-based. There's nothing with any of the, no keyboard, no controllers, nothing. It's all based on physics objects. And it's great for uh, first-person games as well because you could move things around like kind of like in portal how they have the buttons you can put a cube on top of it and it would trigger the button so if you guys enjoy the content please consider subscribing if you have any questions uh, leave a comment and I'll try to answer them as best as I can thank you guys for watching and have a great day